again, very, very honored. <laughs> this evening, what I want to speak about is pros prosperity and spirituality, not prosperity or spirituality. Because I think a lot of times we've been duped into believing that you have to have one or the other. That the, you know, that it's, it's, and, and, and there's something noble in being poor. You know, case in point, look at Southwest Atlanta, look at the Bronx, look at all these places where you hear this outrageous number of spiritual brothers and the places of poor tore down, you know. Uh, and to me, your level of spirituality is, a, is in direct proportion to your level of prosperity, you know. Um, if, your, if your spirituality is high enough, you shouldn't be wanting or needing anything. The um, basic crux, I think what I spoke on the last lecture I did on bioenergetics, that is also here at Sirius Books, uh, I always start out with what I call the five points of freedom. And in my opinion, if you do not have these five points, um, again, the term I always use is just another form of mental masturbation. You're just playing with your own mind. Um, very, very simple. As I've written on the blackboard or the green board, the, the basic structure for freedom is if you cannot educate yourself, house yourself, clothe yourself, defend yourself, and feed yourself, you're not free. <clears throat> if you can do those five things, you are free, thereby you have a nation if you want to say, but you're free. On an individual level, if the individual can do these five things, they're free. I, I use this as, as a base of also um, evolutionary growth, spiritual growth, spiritual food, and just information. If anyone, myself included, obviously, is coming to you with anything that does not adhere to these five, and I'm not saying it's because I came up with them, but these five principles, they're just giving you information. Okay? Because knowledge is not power. Okay? Knowledge is potential power. Okay? Knowledge is only power if it's applicable to what you say you want to do. You know, so to just be talking about things, because I mean, many times I'm sure we've all been in, you know, places where people are saying about things that we don't, they don't, doesn't really pertain to us. So it's really just information, and you can choose to store it in your data bank or not. But if they're not coming, telling you how to educate yourself, house yourself, clothe, defend, and feed yourself, it's just information. Okay? In my opinion, you know, this starts on an individual level. If you can do it for yourself, you are free. If you can do it for your family, the family is free. If the community at large can do these five things, they are free. If a nation can do these things, it is free. If a world can do these things, it is free. Okay? For, for a man, obviously, and I learned this the hard way, the more of these things that you can do, you will have no problem with any woman. None. She wants an educated man. She wants a man who can provide shelter, clothing, obviously defend the family, defend the household, and provide sup, sup, and food, food. If he can do these things, she considers him a man or a good provider. Anything else? I don't care if you're talking about the astrology. I don't care if you're talking about the Moors and all this other stuff. Because I don't. There's very few people that I would say study more about the Moors than me. But I had to get back and say, well, hold it. How's this information going to keep Officer Friendly off of me? Can I apply this when I walk out that door? You know, or is it just a bunch of information that I have? Okay. So this is the fundamental, the, the foundation of, of, of freedom. And that's, as you can see, I have educate at the top. We have to understand that we have never been educated to take care of ourselves. We've never been educated to house ourselves, to clothe. We just, you know, and obviously, and it's not a personal thing, that's why there's not that many people here. See? Because we want excitement, we want drama. Not saying that all those speakers out there are not, I, I love them, I watch their videotapes also. But like I said, me included. If they're not talking about these, these things, just give me information, you know, that you probably can't even use. It's just entertaining so when you can go out and speak about things that sound really high. But if you can't apply it to the basic structure of your being, it's, it's, it's worth nothing. 
It's worth nothing. Okay? Uh, we have to touch into our concept of divinity. That we are divine by nature. Okay? We are divine by nature. It is not ignorance that will kill you. Most people say ignorance is deadly. No, nah, it's the illusion of knowledge. It's the illusion to think that you already know enough that you don't have to listen to what somebody else is saying. And that's basically what it is. You know, it's not only you. No, no, no. You, the only reason why a person doesn't listen that we say that is because that person already thinks that it knows enough. So therefore, I don't, so it's always the illusion of knowledge that keeps you from coming to a, a place, I mean, a mental watering hole like serious books. You know, you think you know enough. You know, you know I don't need to come out yet. Okay? And then we have to understand um, this, this place not being packed the way it should be every second that it's open in relationship to movies like They Live. Whereas, you know, the white kid had to beat the brother's head off to put the glasses on. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just telling them that if you put the glasses on, you, you'll see that this is all an illusion. That they're, they're tricking you into doing this. Mm -hmm. They live. If you haven't seen that movie, it is a must-see. Okay? And we have to understand that most people, they don't want to know the truth. Because they don't want an excuse to have to move. See, they can say, as long as I don't know, I don't have to move. But if they came in here, like, I mean, I came in here nine years ago, and man, it was just like, boom, like a revelation, you know? Mm -hmm. I was coming in like every week buying, I mean, seven and eight tapes at a time, you know, going broke, mm -hmm. literally, you know? But it, the information was so overwhelming, you know? But I was one of those people that I, I had to know, okay? And because we are divine, everybody, that's, that's why I don't really, so, you know, per se judge people for not being, because everybody is where they are. And this information was here before I came, and it'll be here after, you know, and when they're ready, they'll, they'll come in again, and it'll still be here. And it will, it's never too late. There's a big difference between being late and too late. You know, as long as you're alive, as long as you're breathing, you got time, okay? And we, 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 we have heard it said a lot of times that, uh, uh, you know, we have so many brothers and sisters out here. Uh, we would hope that the masses will come together, but we understand that it has never, ever been the masses of people to do nothing. Nothing. The masses of people are just sheep. They follow whoever they think is winning, whoever says the thing that is the most popular. You know, that's all we do, you know, because it takes courage to live life on your own terms. It takes courage to stand up and live with conviction. You know what I'm saying? And because of that illusion of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? The illusion that we already know, we really don't move. You know what I'm saying? And it's only a few people that, as we said before, are running this world now. It's only a handful of, you know, families, maybe five or six families that, that, are, that are controlling the masses. And how do they do it? They, they do it by a thing called the comfort zone. They keep us comfortable. You know, I've got a lot, a lot of clients. I'm a holistic practitioner by trade, by day. You know, uh, I see a lot of clients. I do what is called iridology and reflexology and herbology. And I, I go to to places that I see a lot of bright brothers and sisters and Europeans and white white folks mm -hmm. who work at a well-known corporation. Who to them they're like getting over. You know, they're able to go in this job not work real hard, you know, they can stand up and go and talk to their friends and they can go play over here, they can sneak an extra 15 minutes for lunch and, you know, sneak home early and they think that, that that's the thing to do. But they don't understand that that's compromising your integrity, that you can do so much more, okay? And just like the movie Matrix, for those of, the, for those of you who, who, who actually seen it, what did it say? It says, they want to keep you like this. And he put up a battery. They want to keep you just like a little battery. And I said this in the last video. They only want so much of your energy. Because if you get above 50%, they can't control you. Here. But as long as you have just enough energy to go to your job in the morning, take care of the children, that's all they want. 
They just want you to be able to do to keep their program alive, to keep their program going. Okay, they don't want you to have extra energy, so then you you can think on a divine level. You know, then you cannot be manipulated. They want you to have just enough energy to keep, as they said in the movie, this factory going. You know, producing the things that we want. You know, and it's 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 that comfort zone or the illusion of what is called the comfort zone that is the most dangerous because it's really not comfortable. It's really not com comfortable. I mean, we look now at like the uh, prices of gas that are just getting crazy, you know, just going through the roof. But we people who have, who have studied, we, we know that there's no shortage in gas. And the fact is, they never ever said that there was. They just said they were going to raise the prices. And what, But we have to understand that people are creatures of habit, meaning that they'll get used to it, just like taxes in the first place. Taxes was never meant to go on forever, but people got used to it. And then they said, hey, these people don't mind us continually to take out taxes. They're not saying anything about it. Two or three, they get used to it. And people just sit back like, oh, that, and that's why even now, what do they say? Death and taxes. The only two things that are real. And we who know, know that those aren't real either. Because you never die, and you don't have to pay taxes in the first place. Okay? So we have to watch out for our habits. Because your, your habits create your world. Your habits create your, your destiny, just what you're going to do, okay? And the whole structure of the world is based on what is called your belief system. You are nothing but a, a conglomerate or a big glob of beliefs. You know, what you believe, in, and what you believe is going to dictate what you're going to do and what you're going to be able to achieve. It's very, very important. I'm trying to go down this list and make sure I don't miss certain things, okay? Um, but, but, but... One of the, the key things that they get us with is this, this whole mis, mis, misnomer. And we have to understand, as I said before, prosperity versus spirituality. Okay? Because we as people of color, the biggest thing, the biggest problem that we have is this myth of slavery. This myth that we were Africans, that we're Africans, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. And yeah, some of us probably did come from Africa, but there were, uh, there were also us that were here exactly. from the beginning. Exactly. Yes, they have never exactly. come, they were never left. That's right. But we have to understand as we hear and everybody agrees with words. Words. When you say that, that, that you come from slavery, that is a mindset. Because we understand what a slave is. That's why I never claim that. And if we claim it, claim it on a divine level, meaning that every race of people on this planet at one point or other has been enslaved. Every race. Every race. It doesn't matter Chinese, the, 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 the Slavics, who, who that's where the term slave came from, the, the Slavs, white people, they've all been enslaved. Okay? But when you carry around that mentality of a slave, you, can't, you also carry around the mentality of lack. Lack of. You function from a lack of mentality, where you never have enough. So therefore, you have to, you know, proceed in, in your life to, to always try to, I'm going to get mine. Take advantage of people. You know what I'm saying? Just to get the things that you want. And that's a slavery mentality. You know, just enough, I'm going to do just enough work to please Masa. You know, and then I'll go on with my, I'm going to try to get over on Masa. Which when we really understand, I hear a lot, a lot, a lot of times, and it's, it's, it's flippy, but we think that somebody's holding us back. But it's kind of like the elephant, you know, when they say as, 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 a, as a small elephant, they have a big old chain on them. And he, he pulls, he can't pop their chain. But as, as the elephant gets older, they actually lessen the links until it's just a little small, small rope. Why? Because now the elephant is conditioned in his mind from a child that you can't get away from this chain anyway. You can only go so far. So all they have to do is put a little rope on it. And as soon as it feels any strain, it just stops. Even though we know it could snap that little rope like, like, like nothing. Okay, but we get conditioned to think that we're supposed to, you know, not have anything. That there's somebody watching. And we have to, and we do understand, something inside of us knows that when we want something, nothing can stop us. Nothing. You get everything that you want. You, and your life, is, you're getting everything you want. You are perfect. 
you are perfect. Your life is going perfectly according to your core beliefs of what you want in life. Your life is unfolding just like that. Okay? And until you change those beliefs, your life will continue to go along that path. But we have to understand, I think as I've, I've said, I kind of, kind of touch on the same things. We're a homeostatic people, meaning that consistency. You know, we, we, we've often heard it said, I love you just the way you are. Mm -hmm. Don't ever change. Because mm -hmm. we don't like change. People don't like change. They want you to stay just like you are. Why? So you can continue to give them what they want. Because mm -hmm. if you change, then you might start to look at them different. Like, hold it now, this is, you know, this relationship isn't right. Or this job isn't right. I, I, I can do better. You know what I'm saying? So most people love, they want you to stay just like you are. Or at least until after they get out of the boat. Because as I said before, the toughest thing is to get out of that boat without rocking. And we're afraid to get out of that boat because we think that when we get out of that boat into the ocean of life, that you, um, you don't even know what's out there. You're going to be out there all by yourself. You know, but then this thing, now mind you, this is coming from two sources. The people in the boat who have that mind mindset and that internal dialogue. Okay, meaning those five senses that are used to the little friends in the boat, your little buddies, you know, don't go, because your mother's in there, your sister, and what do you think, you're better than they are, you know, mm -hmm. just stay in there, you know, you know, well, you know, why are you trying to be a millionaire, you know, why are you trying to have all this money, you know what I'm saying, so I'm sitting up and thinking the other day, I said, man, look at this gas, man, it was like Thursday, it was like $1.26, I went back Friday, it was like $1.32, so I said, well, hey, What's the best way to combat this? Become rich. <laughs> you know? Become rich. What's the best? And, and you have to understand that you don't have to dog nobody to become rich. You don't have to step on anybody to become rich. You know, I, I, I heard, and I mean, I don't know either, either person's life. I, a, a long time ago, and what the hell, I mentioned his name. Uh, I think it was Dale Jones came out to see him here. And he was like dogging. Reginald Lewis, you know, he was, just, he was the brother sold out. And, and if you listen to most of these, these speakers, it's like anybody that becomes anything, that gets any type of money, they want to label him as a sellout. Like, like we can't have nothing. Like if Kevin gets too much money, if he gets too much, too prosperous here, mm -hmm. and pulls up in a nice car, they're going to say he must have sold out to the white man. He must have, gosh, can't we have anything? Can't we have anything? Can't we have the nice things in life and still be a nice I'm sure the brother won't change much. But, but, but he should change because the people around him are going to change, meaning that they're going to think that they can get more from him. So he's going to have to change just to maintain whatever he has. You know, so they might label you as changing, but it's really them who's changed. Like, oh, now I don't have to work. I can get it from Kevin. And, and if he doesn't, it'll be all of us. I see if they ever see two white white folks come in here, or I see two white people coming in, he must have sold out to them. They work for some pay. It's just ridiculous. We have our own self in that crab in a barrel mindset. That anybody that makes any type of money has to have sold out. And that's like the thing that is keeping us down. You know, we, we, we actually look at, you know, Southwest Atlanta, you know, and, you know, being in music, you know, traveling around the country, I'm seeing a lot of places. I'm like, gosh, Atlanta is like a gold mine and does not even know it. I mean, there is so much here, not just culturally, but I mean, just opportunity-wise. I mean, brothers and sisters can do anything they want to do here. They can do it from like from what me and Kevin were speaking about land and trying to do various projects. But we're they have us locked in this. If if you don't get it through entertainment or sports, you had to have sold out. You know, if, if you don't don't even think about doing any type of financial. Venture, you know, don't even think about that, you know. But we have to get to the point where we understand that you can be both spiritual and prosperous in your life. And again, like I said, your level of spirituality is in direct proportion to your level of prosperity. And I guarantee, we, we you know, we, we, we've all known people who, you know, uh, are, who don't have a lot of, are very, very spiritual, you know. But that's a choice. If there's still certain things in your life that, that you, you desire, you know, then that means that it's there for you. You know, it, it exists for you. Everything we need 
is in the atmosphere right around us. It's in the atmosphere right around us. We just don't know the science by which to bring these things together to, to make it manifest in front of us. Okay? And again, as I said before, we are stuck on the five senses. We're constantly trying to, trying to appease them, trying to satisfy our eyes and our ears and things like that. And that, those five senses will keep us from our divinity or, or make us think that they're divine. Okay? Make us think that those five senses are divine because they're just like children. They don't want to be controlled. They do not want to be controlled. As I have always said and said, said before, you cannot appease them. Okay? You cannot appease them. We have to get to the point where we understand the importance of meditation. The ability to be quiet, to silence. Meditation is to the soul and spirit as sleep is to the body. It's refreshing. You need it. You need to silence those children so you can listen to the real voice of how you're supposed to function. Okay? And I've been pondering this and trying to deal with it. How does it work? You know, trying to understand how to manifest certain things in my life. And if we look at all of the scriptures, it's not really so much in cold, but it is how you hear it. And, I mean, most people here, being Christian-based, you know, we've had some form of Christian, you know, training until we either, you know, grow up and then we maybe deal with, is, uh, we deal with Islam, Buddhism, or something. But it's, we, 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 most of us all know about some type of Christian faith, Baptist or whatever. But even though, it, they all say, seek ye first. Seek ye first, and all else shall be added unto you. Okay? Which means, you have to understand that ye are divine. Meaning that divinity, that, that God force, Allah, the Tao, function in, functions in abundance. And that's key. Abundance, flat abundance. Now when I say abundance, it means if, if you have negative thoughts, that you're thinking negatively, you will have an abundance of negative experiences in, in your, your life. Because the same thing I said before, I know a lot of people who like, they just have the mindset that they're just supposed to have everything. Case in point, most Europeans. They just have the mindset that there's everything they want, they're supposed to get. They're not supposed to do without. But we have the mindset that we're not supposed to have. That we're supposed to have to work hard for everything. Do we have to go through this and go through that? The life is, 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 is an experience of trial and error. You know, you, you often ask, as brothers, how's everything going? I'm just hanging on, man. I'm just struggling. Well, if you have that mindset of struggle, yeah, that's exactly what you're going to experience. That is because you are divine. It has no other way but, but to play itself out just like you set it up. Okay? Just like I tell people, if you have the concept of, 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 you know, well, everybody gets sick every now and then, you know, and, and, and I'm going to make transition, and I'm going to, but see, if you understand that ye are divine, you also understand that the key to, to transition is that you remain conscious when you go, right? That once, that once you make that quote-unquote transition, because all you're doing is changing energies, you're going from this physical body to the, an illusion, or actually to another probability, to meaning another experience, another experience. As I said before, you're nothing more than a CD. Everything that you can possibly do is already on that disc. It's already on there. Okay? You have to understand again that you are divine. It's kind of like no matter what Kevin does, or this sister here, sister Gladys, Brother Emiola, they cannot do anything that is not a reflection of their consciousness at that moment. It would, it would be, oh yeah, that seems like something Kevin would do. Because whoever knows him closer, that's kind of like he would do. That's something like Emiola would say because it's a reflection of him or her. It's going to happen that way. Because you are divine. You know? And we have to understand that there are patterns to everything. And it's called aggregation. Meaning, what you want to do is set back and notice the patterns of success. Okay? If, if you want to get, or if you want to be a great mother, the best way to do it 
is hang around other great mothers. <laughs> you know, you are the company you keep. You know, if you want to be successful, you have to hang around people that are successful in whatever industry or whatever area of success you say you want to be successful in. Okay? You cannot be successful, as I said before, in learning Chinese hanging over at the Spanish part of town. You know, you, you're just going to learn Spanish. You know, and, and even, even if you ask him, so what, what are you doing over here? You said you want to learn Chinese. You're supposed to be over in Beaufort Highway or whatever. You know, that's who all the Chinese people are. You know, we don't really understand that. You have to surround yourself by the things that you say you want. And when you get to the subconscious level, you understand the core that you always are. You are always surrounding yourself by the things that you believe at any given moment. Any given moment, you are always surrounded by that. But you have to understand, like I said, aggregation, the pattern, noticing the pattern in certain things. Okay? If Kevin wants to be successful in videos, he needs to study what other video stores are doing. How do they promote their videos? You know, and and he, he'll, he'll not only know what to do, but the divinity in him will also know what not to do. What are they doing that might not really make sense? And if they're not doing asking, well, why don't y'all do this? Then you might say, well, okay, oh, now that makes sense. See, but like I say, the illusion of knowledge, the illusion that you think that you already know it, meaning those five senses or that altered ego that you, you think you know, so you don't want to, you know, ask for it. You know, but, but the, the, the most dangerous people on this planet as are the people who possess this one word, and that's why. You want to ruin a marriage? You want to ruin your friendships? Start asking why. You're asking people, why are you doing it? You know, people don't want to explain. Because half the time, people just do stuff. You know, because I was, I was told that by a close friend. Every time I ask myself, well, you always ask why. Because I want to know what I'm doing. I really did want to know why. Well, why, are you, why are you doing that? You know? And if, if for no other reason, do you know why you're doing it? Or are you just doing it? You know, and most people you look, they'll say, "Well, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just doing it." These are grown-ups now. You know, these are grown-ups. You ask them why. I mean, that's a dangerous. The most successful people in the world are the people who always ask why. They have that that thirst to know why a thing works. That's right. Yeah, you know, it's a constant, ongoing thirst. But most of us do not have that because we have that illusion of knowledge. You know, we don't want to look stupid. Okay, and, and we'll get to the point where we, where we understand the only thing that is stupid, if you want to use such a harsh word, are things that you can't apply to your situation at hand. You know, the only answer that is a dumb answer is the one that I can't use. <laughs> you know, then it's just stupid. I, you know, what, what do I need to know that for? Now, guaranteed, I might not know that I need it, you know what I'm saying, but still, it's still stupid to me. <laughs> you know, like if, if you're speaking about certain things, I'm like, I'm going to hit it. You know, this, I can't pertain it. I can't apply it to anything. You know what I'm saying? Just like we were saying, these five points of light, you, and, and I really, and I, hopefully I'll be there, we have to hold brothers and sisters accountable, me included. Gathering of the masses, this is what they should deal with right here. This is it, right here. Now, of course, there are sub-modalities, there are sub, but this is a basic foundation. You come and telling me about the UFO, I ain't seen near one. So why do I care about that? You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, well, maybe I have. Yeah. You know, or even if you're telling me that that, that you've seen them, I believe you. But how is that going to help me here? Right. How's that going to, you know, how's that go? Right. Right. You know, and we understood the importance of it, but we also understand that the basic. Movement, the basic things that cause people to move are two things. People move through inspiration mm -hmm. or desperation. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we Same. know pretty much <clears throat> that they're most of the time move through desperation. Yeah. When they have to move. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't move. Very few people, when they're saying, you know, we as black people, we need to come together. And we need to do... No, they're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. They're going to move when they can't get in Kroger's. Right. When they won't sell them nothing. When they can't go to you know Walmart, you know, and then they're gonna say, the dirty white man, he did this and he stepped over my head, but you've had as long as I have been alive, 
to set your own thing up. You know, cultural communication said, well, let's do this. If, if me and Kevin said, let's buy some, some land, let's go together and do this, would well, nobody feel like doing it? Until when? Until we had it all up. Until we had it all built. Mm -hmm. They don't want to. And that's why you have to, you have to admire the European. Because those jokers are on course. They got back there and they did what they had to do. They sacrificed themselves for their great-great-grandchildren. Okay, they knew that they might not see it in their lifetime, their physical lifetime, but my spirit lives on through my great-great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. My spirit is still going. I will still benefit from that. Mm -hmm. We don't have that type of long-range vision. Few of us, most of us don't have that. We want that instant gratification. We want to have it right now. We are, we are basically passive-aggressive people. Mm -hmm. We want to now buy a video and sit and watch it and then go out and run our mouth to all of our friends about blah, 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 blah. And ain't doing nothing, <laughs> you know? You know, I mean, we want to sit on the TV and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, talking about the man that was shot and was it right and did he, in New York, did he, come on, why are you still debating that stuff? <laughs> you know, you're just using that energy to do, do that. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know in a couple of weeks, It'll blow over there, you know. That's what they're counting on, you know, because there was a thing on um, Tony Brown's journal that the uh, FBI profiled people, and they understand just how to defuse energy. Okay, and I honestly I didn't remember what 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 they said about. Uh, the Spanish and the Chinese, but I do remember what, what, what they said about us. And they said that that's why they came up with marching. They came up with the marching because as long as the brothers and sisters march, it diffuses that energy. Meaning that you don't have to actually come up with a solution to what you're marching for. You just have to march. And that in and of itself is, is, is gratifying for them. They don't have to actually have a solution to it. Okay? Meaning like you have people that, you know, who knows if he's in on it. Al Shark and all these people. Every time something gets stupid, what does Al do? Come on and get everybody to march. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody's marching and all that energy is being diffused, is being pacified. You know, and so if they say, well, let's tear the city down. We're just not going to take this no more. You know, and when we understand, and I'm not advocating violence or whatever, but sometimes we have to understand that it might come to that. That's right. That there are times when you're not advocating beating your child, but sometimes you know you have to spank them. You know that's the only way they're going to. They have to understand that there is a definite repercussion, physical repercussion, if you push me too far. I'm not always going to stand up and go, "Oh, you were wrong. Tell me you were wrong." You know, one of the craziest things when like we see see people that did us wrong, and we say, "All I want you to do is say you're sorry." But you know they're wrong. So what difference does it make if they say that this, I, you know, I never could understand that. You know, I don't care if you said I'm sorry or not. I know you're wrong. And I know that you know you're wrong. And I want to Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, again, I'm not advocating and burning down it, but I'm saying that kind of like that has to be an option. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we understand that they know that it is an option. That's why they defuse that energy. That's why they diffuse that. They want to make sure that you stay passive. Okay? Because first of all, we have to understand, as I said before, that most of us are always trying to get things, trying to have the nice things. Okay? They're like trying to, you know, have the, the, the nice cars and like again, I'm I'm gonna get one myself and have one, that's that's cool. They're, they're, they're trying to do this and do that. But our state of beingness is off. We're not being the people that we need to be to be a, a prosperous community. You know, we're still behaving with a slavery mentality. Like I said, we're still, having, we're still behaving from a mindset of lack. That we don't have enough. Okay? So therefore, every dime we get, there was an a, a example. So now I know I, most, most of us say, how many of us at the beginning of the month have to like, you know, juggle bills? You know, do we, you know decide, do we pay this one? Or, or, you know, do we not pay that one? You know, do we... You know, and most of us do. Most of us, you know, and we have to understand that if you do that, you're broke. 
I don't care if you're making ten thousand dollars a week, but if you have to figure out well, which one can I pay, that's broke. Okay, you are broke. Okay, but when we get to the point where we where we understand the three states of of wealth, you understand that poor people spend all their money and then some debt. Debt. Most of us spend all of our money. We're broke. I don't care how much we make. We're broke. Middle income people spend right at the edge, just enough. They spend right at the edge. Rich people never spend all their money. They never spend it. Because they understand how to use other people's money to leverage the things that they want. Okay, but if you look at most people out here, and instead, you, you can tell when you walk in a person's house their state of mind. You can tell. Most poor people, when you walk in the house, or most rich people, when you go in the house, someplace in that house, you'll see a big old, they'll have a library full of books, videos and rare books. It's somewhere in that house, somewhere. Most poor people, I'm, I'm not saying black, poor people, white and black, when you walk in their house, you're going to see the biggest damn television that they could possibly afford. That's the mindset of most poor people because they're passive aggressives. They want to sit down and passively absorb the information. Okay, so we can talk about people who have wealth, but most people who have wealth are hardworking people. But we've been conditioned to want to do that nine to five job. Come in and do your hours and get out. Kevin knows success is not built from nine to five. It's after five o'clock or before nine. You know, those hours on that end of the spectrum is well is where your prosperity lies. You know. I gotta cut in. I'm just Please. burning with questions. You know, and I'm just Well it's not like we're gonna have a bunch of interruptions, but go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> now <clears throat> number one. Okay, do you believe in certain portions of the Bible and do you believe in certain parts of mythologies that are that they say are myths but you understand them not to be yes, yes, so much. Yeah, yeah. oh most do you definitely really? most definitely. All right, now, I, I've been pursuing a path toward, I said, we got to be cursed because from the, we fell, we, we as a people have yes. fell, okay? And I've often wondered, I said, why could, how could we fall mm -hmm. so low and so hard, okay? And how could we let such a mealy people be over us, okay? Right. So far, I have found, okay? Go ahead. No, I, what, what, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and again, I'm just one way I'm responding. We no, have I to understand. Respond yet? And quick, mm. you have to understand that you cannot be victor and victim at the same time. You, 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 you can't say that somebody's after me, or somebody's do, or I'm cursed, and then say that you're divine. Okay, but listen, let me explain something to you. I have read, okay, like uh, 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 in uh, this Indian mythology yes, book where it says that Indra, okay, the storm god, uh, made the black skinned men to serve, which I know they have wrong for my studies, the Aryan, but it's really A R, instead of A R Y A N, it should be. A R I A, those Germans. Okay, okay. Right, right. Made them to serve that. Yes, also, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it tells you that Pluto uh, sacrificed, I think I'm wording this right, sacrificed the black skinned men. Okay? And in the Bible, it tells you, it said that because the angels or messengers, that's yes. what it really means, were not satisfied with their first, I think I'm quoting it as right as I can, uh, their first estate, they would be chained to darkness until the day of judgment, okay? Then it tells you in another, I forgot which one, I'm not like Jehovah's Right, right, I understand. Tells you, say, why has, why has thou fallen, O son of the morning, which means morning star, okay? Why are your hands trembling? In other words, they've lost their nerve and everything, mm -hmm. okay? I've also read that there were people called the Garamantes, okay? 
and some of them were brought over here to these uh, Americas uh, when the you know big slave thing was brought over. Okay, but these people were supposed to be the the, the caretakers of the oracle of Ammon, which was the chief god of the Ethiopian. All right, or the black skin people. But we know a Ammon is Zeus and Jupiter okay. and all that. Okay, but all of it boils down to that, and it tells you about the Romans who okay. landed a curse on the Carthaginians. Right. What I'm saying, it all boils down to like there has been a curse placed on our people to cause us to fall so low and to cause the majority of us to remain in the state. And a lot of our people seem to be just helpless. Okay, but now, know? okay, okay. To me, it boils down to this. Are you divine or are you not? You could be divine. No, no, are, no, 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 no. Are, are you divine or are you not? Do okay. you feel that, you're, that you are? If you, my say, if you feel that, that, that you are divine, if you say to yourself, how would I behave if I were God, whatever, how, and you behave like that, that's all you do. You know, you know I mean, in, in me, if I know that I'm, I'm, not saying better, but on a higher level, I'm not going to listen to those things, because those, religion was just a con that those who seek to enslave us use to keep us in slavery. It was to their advantage for us to believe, if you believe that you've been cursed, everything that you do not get, you will blame it on that. Well, if you are divine, is there a power that's higher than our specific divinity? No. no I, in, 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 in my opinion. It's kind of like saying that you, you take a drop of water from the, the ocean and you right. take it to, 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 to a Kansas. Right. Well, just because it's in Kansas, it's still the ocean with the exact same power. It's a holographic image of that ocean. The not. exact same power as that whole ocean. Just as much power. Just like in, in, in my understanding, in my teaching, I've, I've been taught that that divine force, that divine power, gave me as much power as it kept for itself. As much as it kept for itself. Well, let me tell you how I feel. Mm -hmm. Just like the people of the Mozambique. You know, I feel a, a, what do you call it? Connection? connection with them in a way. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now, if I'm so powerful, why is it that I couldn't have made the flood go in another direction? The Europeans' backyard, for instance. Right, right. You know? but, okay, okay, but see, okay, but see, this is what I'm saying. We have to understand that we are. Now, now this might sound a little okay. weird. It's okay. It's alright. But I'm gonna say it anyway. Sure, it's okay. <laughs> we have to understand that we are, let's say, as important or more important than God. Why? Because God is on that absolute level, that absolute level of knowingness, that the absolute level of that divine force understands the concept of a rose. It understands the concept, but it needs you to tell it what a rose is. What a rose smells like, looks like, sounds like, if you choose to taste it, taste like, it needs you to tell. It cannot tell itself that. Because it's in the spirit. It is in the spirit love of it. We are divine because we have the, those five senses that are supposed to work for that divinity. But what we do, we allow, it's kind of like a, 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 a master director, okay? Shall we say Spike Lee? Okay, I, was, well, I wouldn't want to offend anybody and say Steven Spielberg, but let's say Spike Lee. He has a divine vision of a movie he wants to make. And he's, he, he, he's going forward to make this movie. But for whatever reason, he starts to flip the script and ask the audience, well, what do you think I should do? What do you? And sooner or later he gets so many opinions from the audience, now the purity of his creation isn't really his anymore. 